So finally the power supply is done and uh, it's time for it to go back and let's get the indicator unit or the real scope out and start fixing it. So let's get started with the main uh, indicator unit or oscilloscope, you know, whatever you can call it. Um, so let's get an overview of uh, what this is all about. Okay, so this is technically two oscilloscopes into one chassis. If you know an oscilloscope basically contains just two sections, a horizontal and a vertical. So this is one horizontal section and this is the corresponding vertical section for that, which is available or they made it as a plugin. And this is called as a lower beam. And in the same way, there is one more horizontal section and vertical section, which is called as the upper beam, so-called. And there are two sets of controls for the CRTs connected to these vertical and horizontal sections. And these CRTs are actually combined into one. So this is basically two CRTs combined as one and sharing the same screen, which means there are two sets of cathodes, two sets of control grids, uh, two sets of filaments, and two beams and one screen. The key difference between this and a dual trace is when you talk about a dual trace, you're sharing the horizontal time base between two vertical signals or you're doing time division multiplexing. Whereas in this, these two are completely independent. That's why you see the beam controls like the focus and intensity separate for each beam, right? Now, what else is contained in this? So if you look at it, the key sections, the horizontal and verticals are plugins. So what is inside the unit other than that? Well, what happens is these plugins supply the signals which are then amplified inside the actual chassis, which means there is a horizontal amplifier and a vertical amplifier, and then all the associated circuitry to generate the high voltage to run the CRT. So that is what is actually inside the chassis once you exclude the plugins. To make it simple, I'm gonna start with the plugins, maybe the vertical plugins, restore the plugins, and then come back to the horizontal plugin fix and restore them, and then we will get inside the chassis. So let's start with the vertical plugins. So what I have here is uh, type L and type H vertical plugins. Uh, both of them are uh, single input, which means it's a single trace vertical plugin. So let's get started with that. This is the type H plugin which came with the unit. Um, two input connectors, but it's a single trace plugin. This is the switch. I would rather call it a manual dual trace. So it's a single input plugin with two connectors and you can select uh, which connector you wanna use. And then of course the standard vertical position and uh, volts per uh, division switch. And uh, at the rear side, of course there is only one piece which is the connector which connects this guy to the um, oscilloscope. This is the schematic for uh, type H plugin. Um, this is the vertical plugin, so it is merely a simple amplifier. Um, as you can see, there are two inputs here, input A and input B, but this is not a dual trace plugin. It's a single trace, uh, single input plugin. They just provide two connectors and a switch to select between both the input ports. Now, coming back here, this whole schematic or the whole plugin can be divided into three sections. Uh, this could be the first piece of it, which I would call as the uh, attenuator section. So this is where you uh, switch the input voltage per division switch comes into picture that it needs the signal to match the input level needed in the next stage. And uh, if you watch here, this position that is 0.005 volt per division is directly coupled. There is no attenuation. The next is the input amplifier, which is a paraphase amplifier or a phase inverter. We will explain that later, exactly what it is. And then it goes to the first cathode follower, which is the buffer. And then it goes to the 
output amplifier which is done using 212 AU6s and then it goes to the output cathode follower which is here and finally to the plug-in connector which takes it to the oscilloscope. That's the high-level map of the schematic. Let's look at each of these sections uh, a little bit more in detail and how the signal flows through the whole uh, plugin. So the input comes here. Let me zoom in a little bit. The input signal comes here and this is the input selector switch. So based on which input is selected, the signal gets coupled right into this based on the input selector switch. And then it goes through the alternators. Now, an alternator is nothing but it's a frequency compensated voltage divider. And they've given the schematic for each of the alternator sections over here. You can see all the frequency compensation capacitors, which are used to ensure that the, the voltage dividing happens at a linear level across the supported frequency spectrum, which is 0 to 15 megahertz. And then after the alternators, it comes straight into the input tube, which is a 12AU6. Now, this 12AU6 is used to split the signal into a push-full signal, which is which works in conjunction with the other 12AU6 to convert this into a push-full signal. That's a phase inverter. And then from the phase inverter, it gets into the next phase, which is your first cathode fallover. That is two 12AU7s. And uh, that signal comes out, comes in here, and then the output is taken out from the cathode of both the tubes and fed into the actual amplifier, which is the output amplifier, which is another 12AU6 that is sitting here. You can see the connection going into the grid. And it's a symmetric stage going forward here. And then the output of this is coupled into the final cathode follower, which is uh, these two 1287s. And you can see the connection from the plate going all the way to the grid of uh, the output 1287. Now this is a dual triode, so this one single tube is used as the output. And the out since it's a cathode follower, the output is taken from the cathode and plugged all the way directly into the plug-in interface, which is processed by the vertical amplifier in the oscilloscope. Uh, one key thing to note here is uh, this is these tubes. These are not just 12AU6 or any 12AU6 or 1287s. These are spe specifically selected tubes. If you look at the uh, unit, you will see a Tektronix part number in it. Uh, one thing you need to notice while working on Tektronix equipment is, uh, say for one specific type of tube, let's take an example, say 12AU6 or 6DJ8, you might have 10 part numbers maybe for the same tube. Each of the part number represents a specific characteristics of the tube or a tube with a very specific characteristics. So sometimes on some specific stages, they test and pick the tubes with that exact characteristics and give it a separate part number. So be careful if you're just going on to replacing, you know, a 12AU6 with any 12AU6 or, you know, 6DJ8 with any 6DJ8 because the tube sitting there could be a special part tube. Uh, the second thing is it, it need not be just the characteristics of the tube. Sometimes they age the tubes as well before they put it into it. Now, the whole documentation behind the part numbers and what is tested in each part number and how they age the tubes, all of this is available in TechWiki. Um, with detailed, uh, you know, procedure and the schematic what they use to age these tubes or for a specific part number, what is the characteristic we are looking for. Moving on, uh, the last piece is uh, the heater power, which is uh, quite important here. If you look at here, this the heater power is uh, like what you see in a typical, uh, you know, hot chassis radio. It's a, it's a chain. It's, all the heaters are connected in series. Uh, the key thing, the key reason for that is the heater power is from plus 100 volt or a DC power source. It's not the normal heater, heater power. The reason for doing that is to make sure that the 60 hertz hum coming in from the normal AC heater voltage does not interfere with 
the input signal. So all the tubes in the plugin are actually powered with DC heater power. A quick note on the tube part numbers. As I've explained uh, while uh, we were going through the schematic, you can see these tubes have uh, very specific labels in them with the Tektronix part number. And that basically means these tubes are special and that's the reason they have these part numbers and you can see it says checked tube. So this is not just another normal, you know, 12 uh, AU6. This is rather a special checked 12 AU6, which has been picked or cherry picked with specific matching characteristics or potentially a 12 AU6, which is aged with specific uh, conditions. Let's look, at, look into the plugin interface a little bit more in detail. Uh, this is more for reference uh, and uh, you know to give you a better understanding of how the signal actually gets coupled into the uh, 500 series oscilloscope. Uh, the, the plug-in connector for all the 500 series are more or less the same. Not all, but most of them. So let's look at pin number one. This is where our output signal is uh, going to. Pin number one and three. And the plug-in interface connector details is available in TechWiki. So if you look at it, pin number one is the plus signal and pin number three is the minus signal. And uh, the signal voltage is also specified here, which is 100 millivolt per centimeter. So this is what the plugin sends back to the oscilloscope through these two pins. And since we are here anyways, let's look at some of the other signals which this plugin is using. Uh, let's look at the heater one. Pin number 15. Uh, pin number 15 is actually a plus 75 volt power supply specifically for heater. This is generated inside the oscilloscope and provided at pin, pin number 15. And if you watch through the other connectors, there is actually 6.3 volt available at different pins. And of course, all the plate voltage is plus 100, plus 225, plus 350, and minus 150. Um, it's interesting to note that the plus 500 volt is not available at the plug-in. Um, and then rest of them are, you know, sawtooth or, you know, slave pulse, which are used on specific models, not on all the oscilloscopes. So if you're putting any sort of vertical plug-in, you need to provide the signals to these two inputs, which is pin number one and three. And then of course you can use all the power supply voltages, which are available here. This is the input connector and the signal comes here and goes directly into the voltage per division input selector switch which is this guy and then from there it comes back to the other side which is the input alternator which you can see here now this is uh, like i said in schematic it is a it is a voltage uh, divider a frequency compensated voltage divider and that provides input back into the tubes. So there are 12 AU6s, 12 87s, and another 12 AU6 and another 12 87. Out of which uh, the first one, these two 12 AU6s are used as the phase inverter or paraphase amplifier. And uh, this is the main input amplifier. Sorry, this is the buffer actually, the cathode follower. And then this is the main amplifier again, 12 AU6. And then the far last 1287 is the last output cathode follower, which feeds directly to the um, the connector here. And that's the rear side of it. All I'm going to do on this guy is okay. I can see one capacitor sitting here. This could be this could be a bumblebee. I can't see it properly, but I'll take it out and see if it's a bumblebee. If it's a bumblebee, I'll replace it. Otherwise, I'll leave it there. Uh, otherwise, I don't see anything which I need to really worry about in this plugin. And all I have to do is to test the tubes to make sure that none of these guys are uh, shorted. And then it'll be good to go. Okay, I broke the clip here and of course it is a bumblebee. Um, I'm going to replace him because I don't want that guy to sit there. So this is another step I do to make sure that we don't have any capacitors like this uh, sitting hidden somewhere in the plugin or the oscilloscope. Uh, I go through the part list. In this, if you see, there is a 3804, 
which is the very first capacitor in the path list that is marked as PTM, which is paper as per uh, Tektronix uh, abbreviations. Um, and I don't see any other paper capacitors in the list. I would. And I think there should be one electrolytic, which is here. I've already checked this guy. It's a 6.25 microfarad electrolytic sitting here at 300 volts, which is 4858. So let's let's check where these capacitors sit and what could be their impact. Let's look at 3804 first. Okay, that is the main coupling capacitor. The use for this is if when you put it into DC coupling, it's going to plug the signal directly, and when you put it into AC coupling, it's going to go through this capacitor. That's that's the purpose of this capacitor. So uh, we definitely need to replace that guy because I don't want this capacitor to leak. Because potentially, uh, you know, sometimes I use these oscilloscopes to uh, measure voltage on other oscilloscopes of the same breed because I know these guys won't kill each other even if I do a mistake. Whereas if I take one of the digital babies and try to play around with these oscilloscopes at a 100 or a 200 volt uh, signal, and by mistake, if I have not selected the right input attenuation, it can fry the whole. Uh, input of my digital scope. So uh, there's a possibility that I might use the scope for uh, testing some other scope. So I would replace this capacitor. So that is 3804. That's the main one. The other one is C4858. Okay, that's that's the capacitor sitting in the main power line. Now I actually want to give it a test and see if it's all good because that is sitting between uh, the bias for the screen bias for uh, the input tubes. So you know, since since it's sitting in such a critical stage, I want to test that as well. I'll also test all the tubes. This guy is uh, definitely bad. Uh, it's leaky. That is the replacement capacitor. And the electrolytic, the 6.25 microfarad, that's not all that great, but I'm reforming it using my capacitance tester. You know, this is one advantage of a T05. I can kind of use this guy to slowly reform it. So right now it's taking about um, 400 microampere and 300 volt input. So I'll leave it for some more time and I'm pretty sure that will reform. Quick recap on how am I reforming this capacitor. Since it's a 6.25 microfarad, um, 300 volts, it's a tiny capacitor compared to the main power supply filters. I'm using the TO5 to reform it. Um, I didn't explain this properly earlier, so I thought I'll do you know a second pass and cover it in a little bit more detail. So this is a standard capacitance tester uh, with the leakage mode option and a standard bridge to measure and leak test the capacitor. So the beauty of this tester is it comes with a, a, a meter where it can show you the amount of current which is going through the capacitor. And it by default sits on a scale of uh, 0 to 600, which is the top scale in black. And then there's a switch here by which I can switch it from 60 milliampere to 6 milliampere, which means uh, one major division in the scale is uh, 1 milliampere, which means I can see how much current is actually flowing through this capacitor. So if we press the switch, this is actually spring loaded. So if we press this, you can see the current through this capacitor is very minimal. And um, you can set the applied voltage up to 600 volt. That's our next plugin, Type L. Um, pretty standard layout in terms of the switches. Uh, you have the vertical uh, volts per division switch, UHF input connector, vertical position, and the coupling, which is AC or DC. And you have a 10x gain stage in this, on which you can you know, switch in a 10x gain optionally if needed. That's uh, pretty interesting. And uh, looking inside, what you see is a uh, whole bunch of uh, filter capacitors, electrolytics, which is I haven't seen in many plugins. Let's look at the schematic for our type L plugin. Um, let's start from the input. So this plugin is different from the type H, what we saw earlier, because it has got a 10x preamp stage built in which you could switch on and off uh, to increase the um, input sensitivity. So if you draw it as a block, this is where the input is coming in. 
uh, the standard input stage sits here till this portion but this is a cathode follower used right at the front end and then this is the 10x amplifier which could be switched on or off by the switch right, which is available in the front panel and then that signal is fed to the main phase inverter or para phase amplifier um, so it can take the signal either from the 10x multiplier, multiplier or directly and gets fed into the para phase amplifier which in turn splits the signal into a differential signal and forwards it to the next stage which is the uh, cathode followers used in the output uh, so there are two sections of cathode followers which are used to drive the output signal and um, the heater is directly connected to the DC power available in the plugin the 75 volt uh, DC rail which is available to the plugin for uh, powering up all the tubes as uh, before the heater is DC power to avoid any sort of interference from the AC line 60 Hertz signal um, the other part is uh, around the alternators as always it's a frequency compensated alternator so they have a whole bunch of uh, frequency compensation compensation capacitors sitting along each section of the alternator and they are used or they are variable capacitors and they are uh, used to calibrate the unit for the right frequency response let's have a look at the circuit in a little bit more detail uh, so this is the input which comes into the main switch depending on AC or DC coupling it's going to go direct or through a capacitor and then it hits the alternator or the frequency compensated alternator which is your volts per division switch and depending on the setting which you pick the signal will be alternated accordingly and sent it to the first cathode follower which is a uh, um, the very first uh, tube sitting there and uh, the output of that is switched into the rest of the circuit. Now from here, like I mentioned, you have two options. Either you can select to amplify the signal into a 10x amplifier or feed it directly to the rest of the stage. Now the 10x amplifier, again, all the sections in this, these plugins are uh, frequency compensated to make sure that you have a flat response all throughout the spectrum of this plugin which means from DC to you know whatever megahertz this is rated for um, so that's where you see a lot of whole lot of extra inductors and capacitors all throughout the circuit uh, th these are just just to make sure that you have a flat response so more or less the descriptions is, are right here in the schematic itself this is the first stage of the amplifier and it's the second stage and then the output is always uh, driven by a cathode follower to avoid loading and uh, then it comes back here and joins to rest of the circuit depending on the switch selection so this is where the actual plug-in circuit starts um, or sorry the actual amplifier circuit start which is the very first phase is always a phase inverter or a para phase amplifier which is used to generate a differential signal out from the incoming input signal or a push pull signal from the in incoming input signal and that is fed to the rest of the driver stages which is are, uh, which is basically plain cathode followers in this particular plugin and uh, as you can see the output is uh, fed to pin number one and three which is where the plugin is expecting the uh, the scope is expecting the uh, vertical drive signal let's go through the part list and see how many potentially paper capacitors are there and uh, the kind of electrolytics uh, which we need to look into so of course the the very first one is the input coupling capacitor C5002 which you can see is a paper type 600 volts that we have to replace and then scrolling further down I can see one decoupling 6.25 at 300 volt and there seems to be some serious uh, filter caps in there oh no that's another 6.25 300 volt the 500 microfarad 6 volt so this could be trouble and uh, another set of uh, multi-can capacitors which is uh, 
definitely pass apply filtering. So, and there is one more uh, 3 into 75 microfarad at 150 volt. And uh, 0.047 microfarad PTM at uh, 400 volts. So five electrolytics and two paper capacitors is what we need to chase down. In case if you wonder what those um, big electrolytics sitting in the uh, plug-in are, uh, there are two types actually, two electrolytics which are CAN capacitors in this. The first one is of course the decoupling capacitor for the power supply. The second big electrolytic is uh, this guy. Oh, I'm sorry, not that one. Uh, this one, which is a cathode bypass capacitor for the second uh, amplifier stage. Uh, if you look at this, there is one more heavy cathode uh, bypass capacitor sitting here, 500 microfarad. Uh, these both are employed in the first and second amplifier stages. Uh, there's also a diode here, which is interesting. Uh, they put this diode to protect the capacitor because this is, even though it is 500 microfarad, uh, the voltage is like 6 volt 500 microfarad is the value for that capacitor. So in case if somebody pulls this tube out and inserts the plug-in back, you know, possibility, the whole 150 volt is going to come and attack this capacitor. So to prevent that, from being ruined, they put this diode here. And then we have a bunch of uh, small 6.25, 300 volt electrolytics, again, used as a, a decoupling capacitors for the power supply. So that is a quick overview on the use of these capacitors, uh, these large electrolytics in this plug. Of course, these are the, these are the final uh, cathode followers for uh, the drive to the scope and uh, rest of the, uh, you know, paraphrase amplifier. And most likely this could be the uh, the stage which is the 10x amplifier. Uh, unusually high number of electrolytic capacitors um, and of course uh, that's the back side of it. A bit more extensive uh, with uh, several ports and this is the other paper type capacitor which we need to test and see if it's going to be good or bad. So this is the first paper type capacitor and uh, the other one is in the main input coupling, which is this guy. So I need to test both of them. And the electrolytic, we should see five as per our count, which is, uh, if you look up here, one, two, three, four, and five. So five electrolytic and two paper. That's what we need to chase. And um, I will test all the tubes as well to make sure that all the tubes are good. Okay, I'm done with the plug-in L, um, as I was suspecting, uh, this is not a paper capacitor, so it's uh, it's good. I didn't have to replace it. Uh, the clamp was broken, so I replaced the clamp for it. Um, so do this particular capacitor, the main input coupling capacitor, that is also good. I didn't have to replace it. Um, the electrolytics, all five of them, I had to reform slightly. That brings uh, this plug-in as well into conclusion. So I have uh, finished restoring both the plugins. I've tested all the tubes, uh, replaced all the capacitors as you saw, and both of them are uh, good to go. So I thought maybe I'll just test them even before the main unit is up. I'll put them into my 547 or 549 or 535, and let's see if they come back to life. Okay, I have a trace. Uh, let's connect some input and see what is it gonna do. Okay, that's a plugin on my uh, 547. This is the type H, which is sitting with uh, input voltage per division of one volt, and my calibrator output is a two volt. So you can see he's uh, perfectly reading two divisions. You just illuminate the screen just to make it a little bit uh, better and uh, all the controls are working so do the time per division now this should read four that's at 0.5 volt per division two three four yep so that that is good that's a type l on the 549 Okay, that's with the input signal. 
I'm going to test it directly through the 10x multiplier amplifier and the scale is at 0.5 volt per division and the calibrator output is at 1 volt which means I should see two divisions on the screen which is good so this is also working so at least now we know that the plugins are good so that concludes this part of the video and uh, the next one is the horizontal plugins type 22 and type 21 so that I will do as a separate video and uh, I'll see you then thanks for watching